if you kind of know the story or you don't really want to listen to the story, then you can just skip ahead to whatever time this says right here. And that's when we're going straight to the handling. Top of the flippity flapping morning, friends and family. How you wonderful, beautiful people doing today? I bring you Serenading the Serpent Saturday, or Socializing the Snake Saturday, or whatever alliterative thing you want to apply to this day. If the thumbnail didn't give it away, which we haven't created yet because it's still the beginning of the video and I'm gonna pull the thumbnail from, anyway. I've got this fine Italian leather jacket that I just picked up from Goodwill. I got my snake boots, bite proof gloves that I picked up from the UK. Our buddy Louis Size, one of our wonderful Patreon members. If you guys aren't part of the Patreon, well, you can consider it. I don't push it that often, but we do put a shout out down below every month for folks. And uh, it's a pretty tight little family we got going on over there. Do weekly live streams and, and talk about stuff. And oh yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's good. And uh, thank you again, Louis, for sending me this. This is a. Uh, this is coming in handy. So my buddy Jim Campbell up in Canada gave me the idea with this pied girl to uh, basically armor myself up so that I can hold her like a normal snake and not have any reaction to her biting at me and my face and my hands and eventually hopefully calm her down. First I'd like to show you guys a couple of snakes that I have successfully socialized here. Now, this is Sangria, our very beautiful blood python who just produced her first clutch this year. And when she first got here she was just a little bitey baby wanted to bite everything. In fact, my very first episode of Triple B TV was, there's a shot of her striking at the camera and she just wanted to strike at everything. And now my kids can handle her and she's just a little baby girl that is so sweet and docile and just easy to handle and I don't have to worry about anything with her. This here is Elvis. He is our super dwarf male, supposedly Kalatoa. He was a rescue. We got off this uh, 12 year old kid who was, uh, not up to messing with the bitey retic it turned out and this this guy was biting everything for quite some time when he first got here he bit me many times he bit noah the bite yeah that's it it's, so it's pretty minor you know it's not it's not that the, the bite that's the bite so it's not it wasn't anything you know it's oh. <laughs> you just get bit <laughs> no are you sure <laughs> Maybe you did itch me. I don't think I itched you, but so I think I think Noah just got bit right now because he got a little too close and Snakey got a little scared. So he bit you, bud, because he was scared, and he thought that you were gonna. He thought your big orange shirt. See how he's he's going at you, because he's afraid, and he thinks that you're trying to hurt him, and so he's trying to protect himself. You see how he's getting all kind of geared up there and ready for another bite. Because he thinks he thinks that you might come at him and try and eat him. He's just really scared right now. Yeah. And so this is how this snake was. For... He was biting like crazy, and eventually, through some nice gentle handling and and training, he calmed down and was able to be a handleable snake that doesn't bite you every ten seconds. It's fantastic. Even though he's still a little bit you know active and a little little amped up sometimes, he he hasn't bit me in a long time. Still a great feeding response, but but no defensive bites in in a long time. He's cool. So obviously the main difference with this pied retic is she is huge, and her bite is a little more formidable. So it's not as easy to train her because if she's biting me, that's a problem. So she, she's biting my hands or biting on my face, which she did when she first got here. Actually, she bit right on my face. Somehow missed by half an inch and. I think my life would be a lot different if she hadn't missed like that. Obviously that's that's a big difference. That's where this idea comes in from Jim with wearing armor so that I can just handle her like a normal steak and her bites won't be as devastating. She'll still be able to bite through to my arms and my legs and torso. But so, so before I actually go and get her out, which I'm gonna set up multiple cameras, put a GoPro on top of the helmet, all that, so you guys can get good angles and see everything, I'd like to share her backstory with you which I just found out most of the whole backstory today. You know, I've known some of the story, but I, I got the full backstory today. If you kind of know the story or you don't really want to listen to the story, then you can just skip ahead to whatever time this says right here. And that's when we're going straight to the handling. Because I'm sure some of you guys are here just because you want to see me struggle and possibly get bit. And that's fine. But that's not why we're doing the video. We're doing this video to hopefully be a series of videos 
that will come up and maybe once a month or something. Well, I'm going to start doing this, this with her every week. Take her out for like 10, 15 minutes and just try and hold her like normal and have zero reaction to any of her biting as much as possible. You know, it's, uh, I'm going to react a little bit if she's like going like right up in here where the helmet doesn't cover or something. I'm hoping that we're actually going to get this girl to a place where she's handleable by the average person. Is it going to happen? I don't know. I don't know, this is gonna be a struggle. This is a long struggle. It's already been a year that she's been here. Just been wanting to take my time because, you know, things happen much slower with snakes on every level, you know, how long they take to digest. Just everything happens slower. So I wanted to give her time to acclimate to the fact that she's here because here's, here's her story. So apparently she was produced at Bob Clark and Travis Kubez did some trade and, and got her. This is when pies were like, I think $25,000 or something. Got her as a baby. And uh, apparently there was not much socialization there, from what I understand. This is hearsay, but it, I think her temperament speaks for herself, that there was, there was no socialization. And he, she was there for about the first three years. When Travis got out of it, it got picked up by uh, Mr. Aaron Metcalf, who was about 18, I think, at the time. And it was his first time dealing with a, a large uh, defensive snake like that. And he took a pretty good bite. I saw the video, grabbed him on the arm. He, the kid doesn't have very big arms. This snake, his whole arm fit in this snake's mouth. And uh, there wasn't, there was some lack of experience going on with all the people around for sure. And everybody was trying to pull this snake off of him. I'm not gonna show you the video because in Aaron's own words, it'll go viral for all the wrong reasons. And I agree, a bunch of people trying to pull her off. So she's got this in her memory banks. This is all stored in there. And it's why she is the way she is. You know, no socialization plus that experience. So, I do think it's gonna be a long shot to be able to actually turn her around. But I'm willing to try, man, because I, I wanna work with her. So we're gonna, we're gonna see what we can do. I guess this is the moment of truth. Okay, it's gonna get hot in here real quick. Ugh. All right, here we go. I'm sure I look as ridiculous as I feel. Can we kill that ridiculous music real quick? One thing is it's tough, these gloves don't get any grip. It's very difficult. I don't want to go into the racks. She's a workout.
I wish I could get a better grip on it with my hands. It feels like unsuccessful so far. But that's okay. It's gonna take a long time, that's for sure. So I'm just kind of realizing that what I said earlier about everything taking longer with snakes, a lot of patience. I think patience, I knew patience was going to be the key, but I just realized there's a different level of patience. Like the patience right now, just sitting on the floor, waiting for her to make the first move, not trying to control her, but rather let her be in control of her own situation as much as possible. I think is what's gonna give her the confidence to know that I am not trying to harm her. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit here until she makes the first move, which could be quite some time. So I should probably find a slightly more comfortable position, not with my wrist keying on the floor. I'm just gonna sit here cross-legged and we'll just do a little meditation. One thing I want to point out is that I'm not looking at her eye because I would think that would make her feel pretty uncomfortable if I was just having a stare down with her. I'm looking at her tail actually. I'm just going to wait until she moves. I don't know guys. I'm starting to think that she's going to win this sit and still contest. <laughs> uh, leave a comment down below. If you were sitting here doing the sit still contest and you decided that she won and she's gonna win the sit still contest and you're moving next. What's your next move? Me? I'm gonna stretch. <laughs> oh. Yo, she won the sit still contest. What would you do next? Is it the whole point to get her used to you well, also just, well, the, the number one point is to make her feel comfortable and confident and not afraid. Well, I think you've done that, and... I've no, she's still afraid. Been... I mean, her body language is, is a posture of fear, currently. Well, I, and that might not change, ever. Possibly. Possibly, true. I don't know, if I were you, I would just put her back in her cage. Just do a little bit tonight, and then try again next week, you know what I mean? Or... That's, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, mommy has a point. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Daddy. Hi, guys. All right, I'll, uh... All right, that's, not, that's kind of what I was thinking too. I had those guys on standby, um, you know, watching me on FaceTime just in case somebody needed to come down or something. So safety, safety first. Ah, oh, camera.
<sighs> oh. Okay, so I felt like that was, I don't know. I could look at it either way. Unsuccessful as far as how comfortable I am right now. <laughs> but successful as far as I know what I'm gonna do next time, which is hold her around my shoulders like a normal snake and try to let her wrap her tail around part of my body and let her be as comfortable as possible doing that and, and, and being held and uh, actually handle her. This time I just wanted to let her get a feel for the room, but the, t the difficulty with this room is that there's so many places for her to go in all the racks, behind these cages, behind everything. And that's not gonna do any good if she just crawls behind something and hides. It's not gonna achieve anything. I mean, she'll get something to lay out of the back of the racks pretty well, but I feel like that's about it. So in the next handling, I'm actually going to take her up, put her on my shoulders. I'm feeling really confident about the gloves now. I, if you can see there at the end, I was kind of petting her on her nose and she's kind of like, wait a minute. I just bit this guy like three times on the hand and now he's petting me on my nose, which I don't know if that's the right technique or not. This is not, this is my first time dealing with a snake like this. So it's, it's all new for me. <sighs> I knew it was gonna be work. I was just upstairs editing this footage and I'm like, so I gotta admit, it was a bit of a failure. I, uh, well, the camera fell over the place. I've got this camera up here with 85 millimeter on it, which is the only other lens I have for DSLRs. You couldn't even see me on the ground with a snake. I had the GoPro pointed a little too far down. So you're just seen as me. You couldn't see my hand and the snake actually biting on my hand, which by the way, these gloves are amazing and really do work. So that's fantastic. I didn't get the footage that I wanted. Next time I'm gonna have my buddy Travis come over, hold the camera for me so that we can actually get some shots. And <sighs> yeah. Is what it is. So I'm totally baking. One girl I forgot. She, she also used to bite the crap out of me. And now I don't even have to hook her. She still talks a lot, but... <laughs> this is, this is pied goals right here. Pied goals. One last thing, I promise. I'm gonna leave this nice sweaty jacket in there with her. Love me! <laughs>